The Toronto Raptors have gone through major changes in the offseason, and it's going to be down to new head coach Darko Ryakovich to get the best on-court product out of the players that we have. But mixing all that is going to be a huge decision that could have major ramifications towards whether or not this season is a success or a failure. Let's get into it. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Amateur Hour Sports. This is the YouTube channel that's dedicated to Toronto Raptors content in videos, live streams, and shorts. If you like what you see from today's video, then please make sure you are subscribed to the channel for more content like this all throughout the offseason. And we are less than 10 subscribers away from 15 thousand on the channel and you can help us get to that monumental milestone but today's focus all about the major decision making that needs to go into this team from the coaching side of things as the Raptors look to put together a successful season and based on the way the offseason has gone so far it really seems as though Masai Jiri and the front office still want to put out a winning team on the court I mean every time you hear Masai Jiri in a press conference even the press conference that he had with Dark Ryakovic the concern with this team at the moment is going to be winning especially if no trade goes down with Pascal Siakam. All the reports that were going on in July were indicating that Pascal Siakam's on the trade block, the Raptors are looking to trade him, but they're not really getting the best offers, and it's very unlike Masai Jiri to pull the trigger on a trade that he truly doesn't feel like 150% confident in, so doesn't seem to me as though Pascal Siakam is going to be going anywhere in the offseason. And if Pascal Siakam isn't going anywhere, the Toronto Raptors still have an assortment of good players. And they don't really have a first round pick for the upcoming season because they traded a top six protected pick to the San Antonio Spurs. The Raptors, with all this information, are likely going to be out there trying to be a competitive team, trying to win games next season. So it's going to be down to new head coach Dark Ryakovic to try and get the best out of the players that we have here. Obviously, the Raptors... Took a little bit of a downgrade with personnel after Fred Van Vliet left the team, but they're really hoping to pick up the pieces with Dennis Schroeder coming into the team, Jalen McDaniels coming to the team, new first round pick Grady Dick coming into the team, along with maybe some point guards and some guards who can surprise on smaller contracts like Jeff Dowden returning to the team, Marquise Noel on a two-way contract, and Javon Freeman Liberty on a two-way contract. But the biggest question that we have about this Raptors team going into the season as far as the personnel that we have and what the on-court product is going to look like is just what the starting lineup is going to be for the team, just what the starting five is going to be for the team. And I got to tell you, Raptors fans are conflicted on how they feel about the starting five and what it should look like for the upcoming season. The major decision that needs to go into things is, well, Fred Van Vliet is gone, so who picks up the pieces and starts in the starting point guard position? That is a big question to ask, and you might be thinking that the answer is simple, but there could be somebody on the other side of things who disagrees with you who also believes that the answer is simple for this one, but it's not quite as simple as you think. I think that going into the starting five, the three players that absolutely must be in the starting five no ifs, ands, or buts is Jakob Pertl as the center. We went all out to acquire him at the trade deadline. The team looks drastically better when they have a proper center on the court. Jakob Pertl is going to be starting. Pascal Siakam is the best player on, his, on this team. So as long as he is a Toronto Raptors player, he is going to be starting. And OG Ananobi, he's far too important to have coming off the bench. Where you can have a little bit of wiggle room, maybe, is with Scotty Barnes, and obviously the easier one to take out of any sort of starting lineup conversations is Gary Trent Jr., but you also have to assess what the lineups are going to look like because some people feel as though Scotty Barnes should just slot into the starting point guard position. He was a point guard in college. He considers himself a point guard. So using that experience from his time at Florida State, he can play as a point guard for the Raptors. You bring Gary Trent to the starting lineup, but other people feel as though that it makes more sense to start a proper point guard in the position for the Raptors, like... Dennis Schroeder, the player that is acquired on the mid-level exception, just came off of a decent season with the Los Angeles Lakers, and he makes more sense as a point guard, as a traditional point guard, than Scotty Barnes does, and maybe the team makes a little bit more sense. So there's two ways to go about who starts in the point guard position, that is Dennis Schroeder or Scotty Barnes. But I decided to ask the fan base here and the supporters in this community specifically what they think about this. So I asked if people think Dennis Schroeder is going to be the starting point guard, and about 65% of people said that Dennis Schroeder, in fact, should be the starting point guard. So an overwhelming amount of people feel as though Dennis Schroeder should be starting for this team. Doesn't exactly specify in this poll who comes out of the starting lineup. So I also asked in a different question, pretty much the same sort of question in my opinion, but I asked true or false 
is this going to be the starting five for the Raptors in the first game of the season? And that was Scotty Barnes, Gary Trent Jr., Pascal Siakam, OG Ananobi, and Jakob Pearl. So essentially, just will Scotty Barnes be the starting point guard? And somehow, some way, 72% of people said true to this, indicating that 72% of people believe that Scotty Barnes is going to be the starting point guard at the first game of the season, when a few days prior, 65% of people said Dennis Schroeder is going to be the starting point guard. So what gives? Who should really be the starting point guard? When it was first revealed that the Toronto Raptors acquired Dennis Schroeder, immediately I felt as though Dennis Schroeder had to slot in as a starting point guard for this team. He makes more sense as a point guard than Scotty Barnes. Plus, I feel as though Scotty Barnes, as far as his career trajectory is going to go, I think his game is more suited to playing as a forward. As much as he considers himself a point guard, as much as he played point guard in college, I feel as though Scotty Barnes' game is much more suited to the forward position rather than the point guard position, so it made more sense to me to play Dennis Schroeder as a starting point guard, allow Scotty Barnes to play as a forward. You'd have Scotty Barnes playing with OG Ananobi, Pascal Siakam, and Jakob Pearl. So the same starting five that we had after the trade deadline last season, except you take out Fred Van Vliet and add in Dennis Schroeder. But then... I went through the lineups, and I went through how it would look on court. I went through what the depth would look like given that starting five, and I started to see more problems with the team. In the modern NBA, you really want to have a, you really want to have as many shoes on the floor as possible, but you want to balance out talent and balance out other parts of the game. So really, all you can get away with typically on an NBA court is having two non-shooters on the court at the same time. When you go to three that's where it becomes a little bit difficult. Guys who are not truly respected and trusted to shoot three-pointers. So as much as Fred Van Vliet struggled last season from shooting threes, he did shoot like 34% from three, which, you know, it's inefficient, especially for the amount of shots that he takes. But since he does take a high volume of shots, the grand bulk of his points come from three-point range and naturally opposition teams, like they respected the hell out of Fred Van Vliet's three-pointers. Even in the play-in game, where Fred Van Vliet had struggled mightily going into the game, the Chicago Bulls played up on Fred Van Vliet on the perimeter every single time. So that was enough to space the floor, and Fred Van Vliet hit maybe just enough of those threes to still be considered a threat from three-point range. So having Fred Van Vliet on the court with OG and Anobi, who's a good shooter, that kind of made up for the lack of shooting that you had with Pascal Siakam and Scotty Barnes, who are relatively inefficient, more so Scotty Barnes in that sense, and Jakob Pertl, who doesn't shoot at all. So we really tried to get away with, let's call it, three non-shooters on the court at the same time, and having Fred Van Vliet and OG and Anobi make up for a ton of the missing shooting on the team. But taking out Fred Van Vliet and adding in Dennis Schroeder, who I would also consider a non-shooter. Like Dennis Schroeder, sure, he shoots like 33% from three, but also Dennis Schroeder only takes like two or three three-pointers a game rather than like the eight or nine that Fred Van Vliet took. So you're losing a lot of shooting by adding in Dennis Schroeder compared to Fred Van Vliet. So now you're like, we are already trying to make up by having three non-shooters on the floor. Now we're really trying to make up by having Four non-shooters on the floor mixed with OG and Anobi, who as much as he's a good shooter, he's a catch-and-shoot three-point threat. He's a standstill three-point threat. He's not a movement shooter. So the spacing really suffers with that lineup. And it just doesn't make sense to go down that route when you have such a good shooter in Gary Trent Jr. on the bench. So the way it makes more sense to me, you got to go with Scotty Barnes in the point guard position. So as much as I think Scotty Barnes is more suited to the forward position, more so the reason I think that is because Scotty Barnes' handles just aren't as tight and he doesn't garner respect from opposition defenses. Like as much as Fred Van Vliet struggled last season, once again, teams played up on him. But if you watch Scotty Barnes as a ball handler, like, like he was literally getting defended like Draymond Green, like Ben Simmons. He was given that sort of treatment where players would just simply not guard him on the perimeter because they weren't fearful of his jump shot. They weren't fearful, fearful of his three-point threat. So it was very difficult for Scotty Barnes to gain any sort of advantage for himself with the ball in his hands as a point guard. And consequently, if he's not gaining advantages for himself, he's not creating those advantages for his teammates. That's the importance of a point guard to initiate the offense, to get the defense moving so you can start to create those advantages. When the defense is static and they're comfortable with you having the ball in your hands as the point guard, that's where your team can start to suffer. So as much as Scotty Barnes is a gifted passer, excellent vision. He is great in open space. He's an excellent full court offensive initiator, but he's not quite adept as the half court initiator. That's why I was kind of thinking Dennis Schroeder needed to start. But as I thought about the shooting, as I thought about the shooting we left on our bench, and I thought about the depth of the team to bench, like I said, it makes more sense to go with this direction. Scotty Barnes in the point guard position. You have Gary Trent Jr. in the two to make up for a lot of the shooting mixed with him. You have OG and Nobi as another good shooter. 
Pairing that with Pascal Siakam and Jakob Pertl, this lineup is kind of the best of what we have. It's not an ideal crop of players to put together, but it's the best of what we have because this allows you to have a bench that also makes sense. Dennis Schroeder can be the sixth man. Also, just because Scotty Barnes starts in the point guard position doesn't mean Dennis Schroeder can't come into the game and get a lot of those point guard reps. Dennis Schroeder is going to be probably playing somewhere between 26 to 30 minutes per game. And in those 26 to 30 minutes, he'll be the dominant ball handler, but also he'll give the opportunity to Scotty Barnes to have those full court sets, sometimes have those half court sets just to alleviate the handling pressure that he would have on himself. You would play Dennis Schroeder on a bench lineup, potentially with Grady Dick, Jalen McDaniels, Otto Porter Jr., and Precious Achua. But when you add Dennis Schroeder to the starting five, again, that's where it starts to make less sense. Dennis Schroeder is a starting point guard, likely sees Gary Trent coming out of the lineup. So now you have Barnes, OG at the two, Siakam, and Pirtle. Not enough shooting there, and then your backup lineup just doesn't make enough sense. You know, for the sake of positions, I have Gary Trent here at the point guard position, but likely if Schroeder is out, then Barnes would technically be like the quote-unquote backup point guard, even though he's starting there. But just for the sake of looking at the lineups here, now you have like two good shooters here, and you don't have enough shooting in your starting five, so why are you sacrificing the starting five shooting when you have two good shooters in Grady Dick and Gary Trent Jr. on their bench, that just doesn't make a ton of sense to me. So to me, the clear choice should be Scotty Barnes as a starting point guard. But then there's conversations from Darko Ryakovich when he acquired Dennis Schroeder, when he got Dennis Schroeder to come to the team, there were conversations about Dennis Schroeder being the starting point guard. So nobody really knows what to expect from this whole situation and what decision is going to be made. But it is definitely going to be a major decision that has huge ramifications towards the season. But what do you think? Who do you think should be the starting point guard? Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below because that is it for me for today. Thanks so much for watching. Drop a like if you enjoyed and subscribe to help this channel hit 15,000 subs. And in return, you get great Raptors content and videos, live streams, and shorts. I'll see you again very soon for some more content here on Amateur Hour Sports.